Hi, DT Mr C here and today we're going to talk about properties of materials. Yeah! Right, so the reason that this is really important is because lots of you waffle in exam questions about this. So I'm going to teach you the key terms. I'm going to show you some good practical demonstrations to help you remember them. But I'm also going to show you how to answer the exam questions about this topic. Property number one is strength. In an exam, make sure you never just refer to a material using just the word strong on its own. Well, that's really, really good advice, John. I know. And the reason for this is you can't just call a material strong. It's too general. You have to be more specific. For example, you would say that a dog's lead needs to be strong in tension. This is so it can resist being pulled in opposite directions. Another example is the legs of a stool or the legs of a chair. They need to be strong in compression so that they can resist the forces caused by somebody sitting on it. Property number two is hardness. This is a material's ability to withstand being scratched, scuffed or dented. It is not the same as strong. Some materials need to be hard in order to do their jobs properly. Let's start off with a piece of hardwood. Knock on it. Yep, that feels hard enough and I suppose it is compared to your knuckle, but not compared to a metal. And I've got a piece of aluminium here. Aluminium is a lot harder than the wood, which enables it just to scratch it when you do that. And hopefully you can see those scratch marks in that I've done. Aluminium has got a hardness of just under three on the Mohs scale. I've got a file here, which is made from high carbon steel, and this file has got a hardness of probably somewhere between six and seven compared to the three or just under three of the aluminium. So it's, this is a lot harder. And that enables me to file the aluminium without the file going blunt. And you can probably see some of the aluminium filings there. I've also got a knife that's made from stainless steel. Now, stainless steel has got a hardness roughly of between 6.5 and 7 as well. And this is why it's useful for chopping up veg or other things. If the stainless steel wasn't hard, the knife would go blunt quite easily. So far, we've looked at materials that go up to about 7 on the Mohs scale. So we looked at stainless steel and we looked at high carbon steel on the file. They're kind of reasonably hard metals, but the Mohs scale actually goes up to 10. Diamond is the hardest substance known to man. Now, diamond isn't a metal, but it's got a hardness of 10 on the Mohs scale. The hardest metal known to man is what my ring is made from. It's called tungsten carbide. And what that means is because it's harder than the file, which has got a hardness of 7, it means I can file my ring like that and I will never scratch the ring. It hasn't got a mark on it. Number three, toughness. The ability of a material to absorb an impact without breaking or fracturing. This is not the same as strength and hardness. So the words strong, hard and tough sound very, very similar to each other, but they are different. Now, it's really important that you understand that toughness means can something absorb an impact without breaking. Impact means hitting something suddenly. It's not the same as a constant force, like this hammer hitting the piece of wood. People often get toughness mixed up with hardness. Hardness is about the surface and whether it can withstand dents and scratches. And hopefully you can see from that picture there that the wood isn't particularly hard because there's a big dent in it from the hammer. But the wood is actually quite tough because although I hit it really hard, the whole object didn't break. Watch again. Metals are tough. If they weren't, then when you did things like this, they'd break. It's not just metals that have to be tough. Lots of plastics are too. Look at this car bumper. The plastic that this is made from has to absorb the impact of accidents so that people inside the car don't get hurt. What are you doing to that car? Tough materials often deform during impact, but then spring back to their original shape afterwards. Just watch the slow motion now with this car bumper when I kick it. It doesn't matter that it deforms because it springs back to its original shape without breaking. This is what makes it tough because it can still absorb the energy without actually breaking. Stab vests and bulletproof vests are made from something called Kevlar. Now this is a really tough material and it has to be, otherwise bullets and knives will penetrate it. If I was to drop this drinking glass onto the granite worktop from even a modest height, the glass will break because glass is not particularly tough. In fact, it's very brittle. Having said that, some glasses are toughened. For example, the glass on the double glazed window or on car windows is tougher than normal glass. This means that it can withstand more impact without actually breaking. Property number four, malleability. Malleable materials can be hammered or bent into different shapes without breaking. 
For example, metals are malleable. Right, to help demonstrate malleable, I've sneaked into school during the holidays so that I can get some things to show you. Right, now malleable doesn't mean the same as flexible. Flexible basically means you can bend something and it wobbles about like that. But it doesn't stay in that shape. If I let go of the plastic, it just goes back to its normal kind of flat shape. What malleable means is you can change its shape by bending it, but it stays in that shape. Okay, so I get a piece of wire gauze, for example. I can bend it, let go, and it changes into the stays into the shape that I've changed it into because metals generally are quite malleable. Now, I've got a piece of wood here. It's MDF. If I try and bend that into another shape, right, it's flexible up to a point, but then when I go like that, it just fractures. And that's because woods in general aren't malleable. It means that um, when you bend them, they will fracture instead, so they're not malleable at all. Right, to further demonstrate how metals are quite malleable, we've got a piece of mild steel in this vice, and we're going to knock it over into shape, and it'll stay in that shape without fracturing because it's malleable. Go for it, sir. Perfect, there you go, metals are malleable. Take it out with a vice, sir, and have a look. There you go, beautiful. It hasn't fractured one slight bit. Right, acrylic is not malleable at all, because when you whack it, there you go, it's fractured. But you can't permanently change its shape at room temperature without it breaking, therefore acrylic is not malleable at all. Number five, ductility. Ductile materials can be drawn or stretched out. Copper is ductile, which is why it can be stretched out into wires. Think about this piece of blue tack. We can stretch it out and it can get longer and longer and thinner and thinner. It's kind of the same as what's happening to this copper wire. This is why we can achieve really thin but really long pieces of copper to make wiring with because it's ductile. Number six, elasticity. Things that stretch and return to their original shape like elastic bands and springs. Right, so the main thing about elastic materials is that when you stretch them, they return to their original shape. So, as the name might suggest, an elastic band, you stretch it, and then you let go, it returns to its original shape. Now, blue tack again is not elastic at all because when you stretch it, it stays stretched. There you go, it's not elastic. Now, the rubber is quite elastic as well because I can squash the rubber, let go, and it returns to its original shape again. Number seven, electrical conductivity. If it lets electricity flow through, it's a conductor. If it doesn't let electricity flow through, it's an insulator. The metal pins of the plug and the copper wire inside the flex are both good conductors of electricity, meaning that they'll let electricity flow through. The plastic casing of the plug and the plastic cover of the flex are both good insulators, which means you can touch them without getting an electric shock. Number eight, thermal conductivity. Good thermal conductors let heat pass through them. Good insulators stop heat from passing through them. If I want to heat my baked beans up, well, for a start, I'd be better off taking them out of the tin and putting the heat on. Then having a metal pan is a really, really good thing because metal is a good conductor of heat. It allows the heat from the flame to travel through the metal to get to the food. Now, if I want to stir the food, the worst thing I can do is leave the metal spoon in because when I want to touch the handle, the heat will travel through the spoon to the handle and touching it would burn my hands. I would be far better off using a plastic spoon because plastic's a good insulator meaning that the heat won't travel up therefore when I touch the handle it's not going to burn my finger. Number nine, fusibility. Fusible materials have got low melting points things like hot glue and solder. This means that you can join other things together quite easily. I'm sure that you're all familiar with hot glue guns. You put a stick of solid hot glue in that end travels through the heaters, you squeeze a nozzle and some hot glue comes out this end. Now, we, the reason that we call hot glue uh, fusible is because it's got a low melting point, roughly 110 Celsius, so it can still burn you, but it's a lot lower than the melting point of the plastics that we're going to stick together, this piece of acrylic, which we're going to stick to a piece of high-impact polystyrene. Okay, so it's called fusible because it's got a much lower melting point than the other things around it, therefore it doesn't melt them when you're gluing it together. Ta -da. Absorbent materials like paper towels soak up moisture very, very easily. To demonstrate absorbency, I'm going to show you some normal white paper and some paper towel. If 
I splodge water on, you can see that the water soaks into the paper towel really quickly because it's really absorbent. On the other hand, the white paper isn't as absorbent, so the water sits on the surface for a while before it soaks in. This is why paper towels are really good for cleaning up mess because of its absorbency. Natural fibres like wool and cotton are really absorbent, which is why it's easy to dye them in different colours. Synthetic fibres, which means man-made fibres like polyester and lycra, aren't absorbent particularly. Right guys, time for some questions. Let's see if you can put into practice what you've learned so far. In a moment, I'm going to put on the screen some questions. And when the questions come on the screen, what I'd like you to do is pause the video, have a go answering them, then unpause it. And what I'll do is I'll go over the answers I'll explain what they are and where you get the marks. Sound good? Let's go. Pause. Okay, so here's the answers coming up. The answer to one is C, a material that can be bent into shape without breaking, just like most metals. Repeated impacts means being hit several times, so things that can withstand that are tough. They can do it without breaking. Remember that the command word in this question is explain. So what you've got to do is you've got to give the property which is absorbent. Then you've also got to give the advantage and explain it which is that they can be dyed into different colours. First of all notice that the question is worth three marks. You will only get one mark for putting copper down as a material. And the question does say referring to its properties plural meaning that you should be thinking about putting at least two down. And it does also say explain, so if you just put it's ductile, that's not really explaining. But if you put it's ductile, meaning it can be drawn out into a wire in the first place, that is explaining. Similarly, if you put that it's a good electrical conductor, you can then explain and relate it to its job, which is to conduct electricity. You could also have put malleability here, because as we know, cables get bent and flexed in lots and lots of different directions all the time. And they have to be able to do this without breaking. Therefore, copper, being very malleable, is suitable for this. Right, to score high marks in this question, you first of all have to talk about malleable and being good thermal conductors, because if you don't, you're not actually answering the question. Also, for full marks here, you have to relate your answer to the question. It's about saucepans, so I'd expect you to refer to saucepans in your answer, just like the examples I've given there. There you have it, properties of materials. So remember, when you get questions about this, learn the facts and the key words. Don't waffle whatever you do. Give proper examples. Stick around for the music at the end because I've put some more examples on too. Bye for now.